Right then, in my previous video, which was changing the bottom ball joint on my bucket of shit Mercedes Vito van, at the very end of that video, you can see that video here, we rolled in a Mark III Ford Mondeo, two litre Duratec petrol engine. It was rattling its tits off. There was smoke bellowing out from underneath the bonnet. Basically, one of the con rods had snapped or broken the engine and punched a hole through both sides of the engine block. Woohoo! <laughs> it's interesting. It's funny when these things go wrong, unless you've got to pay for it. But anyway, what I want to know is, well, here's the thing. This particular car, a few weeks back, it was drove through flood water and water got in the air clean. We believe water got into the engine and done some damage. But when all the water was cleaned up, it kind of started again and ran and everything was fine. So we believe, we believe the engine was perfectly good. So the guy who rented the car drove the car off again. A couple of weeks later, obviously, he's rung up and he said, my engine's clattering. Obviously, a con rod's gone from the side of the block. So I'm going to take the engine apart quickly just to see what the damage is because it's interesting to see what the damage is. Secondly, I've got to take the engine apart anyway because all the bit we've got a lot of these rental cars here. All the bits in this engine are probably good to go on another car when they go wrong. So I've got to strip it anyway. I feel a bit like a vulture stripping the carcass of a dead animal. But anyway, let's do this. Do you know, I do love it when a 8mm bolt gets so rusty, it's now a 7mm. <laughs> yes! It's undone. Thank God for that. Oh, look at this. Four branch manifold going onto a little pre-cat. I tell you, all the pikeys will be wetting themselves over this. Hey, Paddy, Paddy Murphy. Have you got any cats? Yeah, I've got some scrap. Have you got any cats for sale? I've got some, I've got, I've got some cats for sale. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I, guess, I, I guess I'd better put this out of the way of prying eyes. <laughs> well, if I look at cylinders one, two, and four, they all look nice and the same colour basically, a nice light darkish grey. But cylinder three, if I go up to where the bloody exhaust port is, it looks very much like water's been coming out of this cylinder. Yeah, get that out of the way. Well, because this engine's rocking about too much and it's doing no good for my camera stabilisation, I'm going to get this off and put a stand on this bloody engine to hold it secure. I'm going to unbolt this inlet manifold now, which is just a load of 10mm uh, bolts. And if you want to see that video, it's all about the inlet manifold and the swell flaps, blah, blah, blah. You can see that here. There's one bolt left holding the, the base of this manifold to the engine block, 10mm again. Oh, we're off. <laughs> Let me just have a quick look at these swell flaps. Oh my God. Yep, I can honestly say the bushes that they run through are completely worn out. I shall have to de-swell flap this manifold. Oh look, here's your famous breather hose. 
This is the one that kind of like splits all the time and you've got to take the manifold off to change it. It's a right ass of a job. This one, by the way, wasn't even, the clip wasn't even held on. <laughs> so you ever change, this has been changed before, but someone's not put the clip back on. This power steering reservoir, it's a bit of a pain. You've got two 10 mils that way, then another eight mil that way to actually take the reservoir off before you can even undo the pump itself, which is like, yeah, four 10 mil bolts. But when they're out, that's it. We're off. Oh dear. Four 13 mil bolts on your aircon pump. <laughs> there. I'm going to remove the cylinder head, but I'm going to have to get the chain and chain cover and all that off as well. So all these pulleys have got to come off. So I'll just whack all these out of the way. <laughs> and last but not least, the alternator. <laughs> there. Spark plug leads, off you come. There's a little water housing at the end of the cylinder head. I haven't actually got to take this off. It's four like eight mils, but I'm going to unbolt it anyway, just to get it out of the way. There, that holds the coil pack on top. And two 10 mils, holding our EGR valve on. That can come off. We're getting there, whole load of eight mil bolts, holding this top plastic cover down. Okay, <laughs> let's see if we can get this plastic, oh, oh it's loose anyway, I thought that might be stuck down but it wasn't. <laughs> Look at that quality multi-link timing chain. Mm. <laughs> That's because it's a Mazda engine. They were using better quality components back then. Anyway, I did do a video on setting up one of these timing chains if you ever had to go down that route. You can watch that here. So what's the bet in this 21mm crankshaft bolt's going to come undone? Shall we see? No! Right, I'm locking the camshaft because I can't lock the flywheel because it's already off. So we're just going to see. Will it budge? Jump and snap. I bet, I bet you that was my bar that just snapped. Oh, I bet it was. Oh God, that don't sound good. Well, it can't be the bar, it didn't snap three times, I do know. No, that's not working. Oh, so it's jumping teeth on the chain? Yeah. <laughs> Things are getting serious now. If this don't work, I'm going to go at it with a hammer. Yes! Oh my god! It's moved! <laughs> it's a smoking! <laughs> you don't really want to be using a blowtorch on the crankshaft bolt if it were your car. I'm only doing that to speed things along because it's a scrap engine and I don't care about the crankshaft pulley. Anyway, all I care about, the bolts come undone, now we can get it stripped apart. <laughs> I ain't touching it. <laughs> I'm, I am not touching this pulley. <laughs> it's a bit on the hot side. Now that frigging pulley's off, there's about a hundred eight mil bolts, which I need to undo. Now all the bolts are out. If you want to know how to remove this casing, that's how you remove the goddamn casing. Anyway, let's crack on. Get these pulleys off. You know, these could have a very good purpose. Maybe later. Uh, come on, get 
get off 10 mil bolts holding the camshaft caps down. I shall wears them all off. There. I would normally undo the head bolts with a bar, but because I'm in a hurry and I don't care, I'm just going to air gun them out. That's if they do move, we'll see. Oh yes indeed they do. Oh yeah. On a more serious note, these shim buckets that go over your valves, if you were going to keep the cylinder head and these were going to be reused again on the same valves, you'd want to keep them all in the same order because these are all a certain size. You have to use a micrometer to measure these and order up the right size. So just saying, don't get them mixed up if you're going to reuse them. Will the head come undone? Oh, <laughs> it's actually loose. Well, I'll just lift it off then. <laughs> yeah, the top of this piston definitely looks like it's been washed. There again, we could be looking at a combination of like water that's gone through the cylinder. Plus, when that con rod let go, we've got to remember the, in the fuel injector is still going to be like dumping fuel into the cylinder. So that will probably explain a lot of it. I think I'll just, oh my God, there's, <laughs> there's flipping, there's valve marks in the top of the piston as well. But I should think them valve, that, that the valves hit the piston after it broke free. Ah! Them valves actually look okay. But judging by the, the, <laughs> the depth of the indents they've made in the top of the piston crown, let me just check them anyway. Right, I'm going to start off by pouring some brake cleaner down the exhaust port. Oh yeah, ever, ever so slight just there, I think. <laughs> but I'd probably say these valves are okay. Mind you, if I were going to use them again, I'd definitely grind them back in again. It's just a slight bit of dampness here. Fiesta ST fan, give it some! Anyway, let's get back to the cylinder head. Right, the, the messy bit. Yeah! <laughs> let's fill this up again. Inlet valves this time. Oh my god! That, that is absolutely. Absolutely pissing out. Both of them. <laughs> well, we can definitely say both them inlet valves are bent, which means they're not, you can't use them again. They'd have to be replaced. If you're going to use this cylinder head again, you'd have to take all, of, all these valves out and replace them with brand new ones. They're not bent badly, only slightly, but I'm telling you, it won't run right. No, not like that. That's screwed. Right, I've actually remembered to drain the engine oil or what's probably left in there before I take the sump off. Bloody hell. <coughs> that, that was actually really tight. But I'll get this draining out now. There, oh, there's still oil in there. <laughs> right. I'm just gonna take this breather casing off because I think I should do. There, get out. There we go. Oh, <laughs> a bit of engine casing. I'll tell you something, there ain't much in there. Now look at that. That's proper good, that's a proper good hole. Anyway, now I've got to take the sump off. This is where I'm going to make a goddamn mess. Are you ready? Here we go! The 
Just see how much all the water pisses out. Yuck. I'm actually impressed. I expected there to be a lot more come out. Right then, let's get this sump off. There's certainly plenty of bits of broken casing in the engine. So this is what you'll be waiting for. I'm going to undo this big end cap and then we'll see what the damage is, shall we? Anyway, this is it. Woo! Let's get these bloody bolts out. Come on. Woo! 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 There we go, there's the big end cap off. See ya. Let's pop of this a piston outer. Holy crap, look at the state of that, Jesus Christ, the, the actual conrod I would expect it to actually, I would expect it to broke, break where it goes around like the, the pin here, but it's actually sheared clean off there, like it's snapped in half. Alright, let me just get the rest of it out of the engine, wherever it is. <laughs> oh my god! Look at the state of that. That that is actually bent. Look how curved that is. Flipping heck. I, I I reckon I actually believe now water got into this number three cylinder, it bent the conrod, and it wasn't me who cleaned all the water out of this engine, so I didn't originally see the engine running but it's just what I've been told because it was done at a different garage, a uh, sales garage. But I reckon the water got in, got in a cylinder, it bent the conrod, and it might not have actually caused the engine to misfire, but it's obviously weakened it here, and a few weeks later on, this has gave way and just snapped off. And then obviously this rod has been going up and down, and it's, <laughs> it's gone, it's gone uh, sideways and gone through the engine block. But that is a, that is a mess. That, that's the result of what water can do, because if you don't know, you can't compress water. So something's got to give, and it's going to be part of the engine. So yeah, that's what I reckon's happened anyway. And, and by the way, when this actually gave way, I reckon, because this has been banging around, that's what's put more pressure on this. It's, it's actually smashed, it smashed all this piston skirt. So all this damage here has all happened like the moment this broke. But the original, obviously, that the water in the engine to start with is what, is what weakened this. And a couple of weeks later, it's just let go. Well, that was interesting. So, uh, chemical metal, anybody? <laughs> I guess this would be a good point to end this video now. I will end on this note, though. The amount of people out there that have absolutely no idea of the consequences of the damage they're going to do to their engine driving through flood water is beyond me. No disrespect to them, obviously, because I guess if you don't know, you don't know. But I'll also say these are also the people who cut you up on a roundabout using the outside lane to turn right, and they'll also be the people who will never be watching this video. On that note, guys, till the next time, see ya! <laughs> Till the next time. See ya.